Morning. We continue to watch closely for a reaction from several key senators to this FBI report. They have said they are waiting to read the latest FBI interviews on Brett Kavanaugh before deciding how they're going to vote. And as Democrats also are getting a first look at this report, remember the full Senate will see it before they vote on the nomination. Will they accept the findings? Joining us now, Senator Ed Markey, Democrat of Massachusetts, sits on the Foreign Relations Committee. Nice to have you this morning, Senator. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Let's begin with the fact we know that the FBI had extensive conversations with nine people, okay, nine, uh, in nowhere near the full list of those who were turned over to them, recommended to them by Democrats and Republicans that they, that they should talk to. Um, we know that Ford and Kavanaugh did not speak to the FBI. They did not interview them. In your view, is this a fulsome and credible investigation? It's obviously a cover-up. The the Trump White House, uh, working with the Republican leadership in the Senate, have deliberately circumscribed uh, this investigation so that only a small handful of people will be uh, questioned. Uh, and if any leads are in fact developed, that the FBI is not allowed uh, to follow them in order to determine the truth of what happened. And whether, whether we're talking about Debbie Ramirez or we're talking about James Roach or we're talking about many other people who have come forward well, to say that they are willing to give information, the FBI, uh, the White House, and, and Senator, uh, the Senate leadership are just turning a deaf ear. Senator, that's quite an accusation to say this is a cover-up by the White House. And I would just say in response to the question about limiting the scope of the investigation, Raj Shaw this morning on New Day uh, told Allison Camerata, look, the Senate has to put boundaries on this and has to put limits on this, and that's what the Senate did. To that, you say? I say they're making a mockery of the constitutional requirement that the Senate provide its advice and consent. Mm -hmm. uh, they're limiting how many people can be interviewed in the wake of the Kavanaugh testimony. They're not even interviewing Kavanaugh or Dr. Ford. Uh, and then they're handing us a document this morning that 100 members of the Senate must read. They've only made one copy of it for the United States Senate and then scheduled a vote tomorrow on this issue. This is making a mockery of the constitutional responsibility of the Senate. The Trump White House has orchestrated it. The Republican leadership has acquiesced to it. But ultimately, it is the American people who are being disserved by not allowing their elected senators to even read or understand what, in fact, this the total comprehensive uh, body of knowledge is about this man. Let, let me ask you this question, because, because what we know, and, and we don't know everything about, of course, what's in this report, because we haven't read it ourselves, but, but we believe that the FBI at least reached out to potential witnesses to the alleged sexual assault. It, it's the White House's reading, and I suppose we take that with a grain of salt, but, but still, that, that none of those witnesses corroborated Ford's account. If it is true that, that the limited number of witnesses to that uh, did not corroborate the account, does, does that, in your view, uh, present enough uh, doubt or questions about that account to move on? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, the, the veracity of uh, Judge Kavanaugh at the hearing uh, is clearly something uh, that is questionable given the dubious answers that he gave to the Democratic senators <clears throat> about the information uh, back from when he was younger. That's not to say that a young person isn't capable of making mistakes, but you should not be telling lies about it to the United States Senate in your confirmation hearing. And his temperament before the Senate during that hearing, that also clearly, in my opinion, disqualified him. When he's talking about uh, everything that goes around, comes around, re making references back to the Clintons, when we're just trying to get to the source of the truth uh, of who he is, what his, ba is, what his background is, and what his temperament is, clearly he got disqualified. And the reason it's so important is that Donald Trump promised uh, the American people that he was going to name a justice who would repeal Roe versus Wade, who would repeal the Affordable Care Act and the pre-existing condition coverage that every American is entitled to. So the consequences of having a cover-up, not having all of the information be made available to the senators could lead to someone who is serving on the Supreme Court, who in fact 
does not have either the credibility or the temperament, but is nothing more than a political appointee to effectuate the political agenda of Donald Trump. All right, so, so Senator Ed, Ed Markey, thanks very much for taking the time today. We'll continue to monitor as your colleagues are getting their first chance to read this FBI report. You know, then it ends up in the hands of, of Congress. If, if mm -hmm. he is confirmed, then it's up to, you know, the House. Will they move to impeach, which is something Next we year, haven't well, seen in a long, be, long time would, if Dems retake control? That would depend on Dems, of course, of retaking course. control. All right, quick break. We're back in a moment.